Hello and welcome to the Equestrian Canada, Canada Equestrian National Health and Welfare Call. This call takes place monthly and is open to anyone in the horse industry. My name is Tina Bobstein and our pre first presenter today is uh, Christy House, the EC Manager of Welfare and Identification. These calls were developed to, incre to increase information sharing within the horse industry in Canada on all topics related to health and welfare. Please note that the call is being recorded and it will be posted on EC's website along with previous calls. Links related to, to the call can be found at the same location. Because the call is recorded, we will try to hold questions until the end as some people are not comfortable with their questions being included in the recording. We've muted all the lines to avoid background noise. If you wish to, to unmute to ask a question at the end of the call, please press star six. So with that, uh, Christy, can you please go ahead and uh, talk about the the National um, uh, Identification Program? Yes. Uh, thank you, Bettina. So um, for those of you who are on the call and aren't aware, we did release a consultation uh, process about uh, two weeks ago. Um, so over the past two years since I've come on with Equestrian Canada, we've spent a lot of time with a variety of different groups. Um, including we had a very specific equine uh, ID task force who did a lot of consulting in the past on this project, um, as well as in the beginning helped to sort of give me a rundown of where we are, what the expectations are, uh, what this kind of program needs to include. Um, and then from there, I kind of went off and um, consulted with our health and welfare committee, uh, different industry members being veterinarians, uh, farriers, breed registries, um, as well as did a pretty thorough consultation with our federal um, government and some of their agencies, including the Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Um, so the document to start off, if you'd like to follow along, if you're not online, um, we have it on the Equestrian Canada website. It can be found under news, and if you scroll down a bit, there is a consultation there on the document. So what you can find within the program is kind of an overview of what this could look like. So a few um, key points before I get started and before we take questions is that at this point in time, the contents of this program have been developed based on the variety of consultations, uh, what's going on with our closest neighbors being the United States, uh, what some of the international bodies are doing, uh, Europe, UK, Australia, New Zealand are doing a lot of work towards implementing similar programs at this time. So there's been conversations between them, their governments, us, um, and we're all kind of trying to work together on something that's going to work both for each individual country as well as for international information sharing. Uh, there's been a lot of progress in technology that's out there that helped facilitate some of the leaders in equine identification and traceability, um, as well as some different regulations around the world that have come into play that we've kind of been watching and how implementation goes and, and lessons that we can learn from them, as well as things that have been done well that work well and that we can also, you know, factor into this situation. So, uh, first and foremost, the program for the very long foreseeable future is voluntary. Um, all aspects of the program are voluntary uh, and it's an industry driven program at this point, meaning that industry really does describe what they want to see, uh, what they would like the outcomes and the deliverables to be, uh, how we, uh, evol how evolution of the program moves forward, um, and and what value-added aspects they would like to see. So um, that's what can be found in the document so far. Uh, there are a few different aspects to it. One that has been brought forward by a lot of our affiliate breed registries, as well as something that has been implemented um, in the United States, which is considered to be affiliate breed registries. So if a breed registry, whoever they may be or wherever they may live, they can choose to be an affiliate of the program, meaning that every horse that is registered with them uh, would automatically be registered into the program and have records within the central database. So that, again, is a voluntary position of that specific breed registry. There are some benefits to doing it that way. Uh, we've had a variety of our breed registries come to us and say that 
there's been a problem in losing um, a horse's identification through transfer of ownership or loss of passports. And then they, the breeders who have brought that horse up and have established the bloodlines kind of lose recognition when it comes to that horse entering the sport um, and having, a, you know, some lifelong verification and some recognition for the, how they do when they enter into the sport side of things. Um, as well, it, having some permanent identification is helping, will help to further enhance the recognition of Canadian bred horses, whether they be performance horses or race horses or uh, breeding stock. So we, we have taken all those points into consideration, and that's how we thought that in order to alleviate the amount of administration required for the actual owner, this portion of the program would be facilitated between EC and the uh, affiliate registry so that when the foal's registered, it's kind of a uh, killing two birds with one stone, essentially. Um, some of the different aspects in here have also been implemented based on regulation that's happening in the EU. So we know there are identification changes in terms of moving into the EU as well as moving around the EU, uh, as well as in the UK. And, and we know that the USEF is working on having microchipping and uh, further identification for competition horses. So because we do so much work together, uh, we're kind of catching up on that one. Um, to this point, we have worked with the CFIA um, and been able to access some the country-specific ranges for microchips for equine. This is something that we've hoped to do uh, for a number of years, but so we have been granted that right, and we are moving into the process of releasing an RFP to find a manufacturer who can produce those microchips. Um, the intention with having country-specific microchips is so that we do have consistency in the ranges. Uh, we have consistency in distribution and the tracking of those chips, as, as well as when it comes back to a branding aspect, we have country-specific chips, and no matter where that horse goes in the world, they can be identified by that country code when they are, uh, no matter where they land. So that's kind of how we got here. Um, a portion of where we're going from here is we're in the consultation phase right now. As mentioned, we have an RFP that could and should be released in the near future to take a look at how we can supply microchips um, and where those could come from, as well as developing an RFP that could that should be released to uh, find ourselves a data sharing platform that can receive information from multiple databases as well as give information from a central database. Um, this is something that we have seen work internationally as well as being implemented in some other livestock sectors within the U.S. and Canada. And we think that going forward with traceability, uh, we need to be able to, you know, correspond all the different databases and identification platforms that are out there into one central database. So if you have the opportunity to go through the document and look at what the proposed program looks like, um, at the end we have some flowcharts. So essentially we're in phase one right now, which is considered to be the implementation of a di identification program. Uh, the difference between identification and traceability is identification is that, you know, identifying the specific animal based on their um, physical qualities as well as their pedigree and having essentially an ID document for that horse. When it comes to traceability, we're talking about the horse, the premise, as well as their movement, and that's where we're hoping to head to in phase two. Um, we need some, con we need consistent and unified identification before we could have a very successful and true and traceability system. So it's kind of a stepping stone to get towards traceability. Um, so in phase one, we're looking at getting the microchips, which we've established the agreement. Now we are in the part of looking for a microchip manufacturer. Um, and then we'll move into establishing some, some distribution plans for the microchips. Uh, because it is a CFIA release and monitored range, we do have some reporting requirements and, of course, privacy requirements, so that process needs to be established. Uh, and then we will look at having sub-distributors of microchips. We know that breed registries, some have already moved towards distributing their own microchips, so ones that would like to participate and distribute Canadian-specific microchips would have the option to do so, and we would set up agreements, as well as the techn technological infrastructure that would support the ease of that process 
And then from there, once we have a, a fully functioning ID system, we would move into phase two, which would um, be the implementation of a data sharing platform. So again, in the consultation document that's online, you can see an overview of what phase two implementation looks like as well as what the intended functionality of a data sharing platform would do. So it would share information back and forth between the horse owner, uh, different organizations, whether it be the CFIA or Border Control Services, uh, breed registry, but also when you get into the sport and recreation side of things, being able to share health information of the horse with an event holder or a commingling site organizer, as well as sharing event information such as results or um, movement back into the central database. And from that standpoint, we would have a very good system in place so that we can respond to things like disease control and emergency response planning. So the, that's down the road, but that's the intended evolution of the program. And right now we're in the, we're in the process of the project plan to go back to everybody and say, okay, please confirm to us what you would like to see the outcome of the program is, what needs that are currently not being met that you would like to see met, and what value added can we add to this program to ensure that everybody's happy with the intended outcome. So from there, I guess um, I can start by taking any questions. Uh, it would just be beneficial if you could first identify if you're okay with your question being on the online recording as well as who you are and what uh, area of interest you come from. So it is star six to unmute. Now this is Bill DeBar. Hi, Bill. Um, can you, uh, do, do you have your uh, presentation that you just delivered typed out? Uh, no, but well, uh, all of what has been delivered is in the uh, online consultation, but if there's things that are specific that you would like information on, I'm happy to put it together for you. Well, I, would it be possible to send me a, uh, a email of what you just presented? It's very, uh, very deep and very specific, and uh, it is deserving of infinite study. It, I would appreciate it if you could send me uh, the written dissertation that you just presented. Is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Do you have my email address? Yep. Thank you. Can you do that for me too? Just sure. Just the guy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, can I just get your name again? René Lévesque at the Cheval, Cheval Québec organization. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Renee. Thank you very much. Hi. Right. Um, so it also is important to mention that anybody who would be attending our convention, which is being held this year in conjunction with the Royal uh, Winter Fair in Toronto, um, both Doug and I, Doug Orr, our um, co-chair of Health and Welfare as well as EC Vice President, will be available at the Royal to have an open town hall discussion. So I will be giving a very similar presentation, although this one will be a little bit more in-depth, include uh, a PowerPoint presentation and then again have the open forum for feedback. So any feedback that's being given on this call today is gonna to be included in uh, the consultation process, as well as the feedback gathered at the town hall will be improved, included. And then hopefully, depending on the quantity that we receive, um, we'll be releasing a, essentially a what we heard document. So we'll be going through the major points, major concerns, um, maybe some areas that need clarification, uh, and then any changes that have resulted to the program as a result of the consultation will be released in a document back to everybody to let them know the feedback we got and sort of where we're, if it made changes to the plan and where we're headed from there. And thank you, I would appreciate getting your, your uh, type dissertation as soon as possible. Do we have any other questions on the line? Uh, Linda from Standard Bread Canada here. I would like to get oh, the, um, a copy of that too. And I had a question okay. about your microchip. Um, sure. The country code, um, yeah. the microchip. I thought like the first three numbers of a microchip is the manufacturing code uh, numbers. It's not the country code because I haven't found 
like a microchip with the country code. I thought the country code was always for the UELN number. Yeah, it is for the UELN number. So if you look at what are identifiers in other or in other livestock, so if you were to say uh, ear tags, um, there because they are a regulated species, they have um, identifier numbers that start with the country code. Because we aren't regulated, we haven't had access to that country code before, so we've just been using manufacturer codes. Okay. So essentially, what we would what we're hoping is that that manufacturer code will now start with our country code and the ranges that have been allocated in the Canadian Traceability Pro, uh, Program to horses will be the manufacturer number on the microchip and essentially the, that animal's identifier number. So, so um, the ideal system would have both the UELN okay. and the microchip number. Now, they may be the same, but there will still be two numbers because we do know that things happen with microchips or – so their UELN will always remain the same, okay. uh, but their microchip number is is an additional identifier. Okay. Okay. Because we, we record both, right? Like we have a different yeah. microchip, and, like, uh, yeah. I I don't see – like we use a microchip that also takes the temperature of the horse, so I right. don't – we use the same as the standard bread in the U.S., so I yeah. don't – you know, I don't really want to change that because it's worked, like, they move so much between the two countries. So, okay. Yeah. So, I, I just had a question on that. That's uh, about So, the, that would be very valuable feedback for you to provide to us, especially oh. as we're wrapping up the final contents of what's included in the microchip RFP. If it's important to Standard Bread Canada that it is um, a microchip that reads the temperature, then that's something that we can include in the RFP as being, you know, one of those value-added considerations when we choose who we're going with. Okay. 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 Thank you. No problem. Any any other questions? Any further questions for Christy? All right. If there's no further questions, I think we'll wrap it up here. Uh, um, a short, short call today. Um, and Christy, sounds like there's lots of interest in, in the details that you presented today. So that's great if, if you can help distribute that to uh, our callers. Um, any, any further comments or closing remarks anyone would like to make? Uh, am I still open? Yes. You are, Bill. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, letting Mickey report at your last call. And to update you, uh, we're excited that the project is really developing into something that is going to be informative, informative for the horse industry in Canada. Uh, the Mickey and the film crew are in, in the Atlantic provinces today, and we hope to have further information and reports on this. Uh, maybe we can, uh, we'll be able to uh, divulge more at, at your next call. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. And uh, yeah, we're very, we're very happy with how the progress of the project's going, and for each week including us, so you know, along the way. And we're, we're happy to see the outcome. We think it'll be a very valuable resource when we move into the development of the animal care assessment program, as well as when we look at educating our riders and coaches on animal care and animal welfare. So we're, we're happy to see this progressing as well as it is. Thank you. Uh, Christy or Bettina, this is Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Uh, Hi, Wayne. Have you had any contact with the major uh, registries on how cooperative uh, – they would be about linking data, you know, specifically thoroughbred uh, society, standard breads, quarter horses. Uh, I just wonder if there, I know the quarter horses for sure tend to be a bit protective about their data. And so I just wondered what the feedback from them was, if we've had any. Yeah, so we've heard definitely from the Canadian registries. Um, the thoroughbreds have been, you know, a major driver, as well as uh, the warm bloods um, and some of our affiliate registries. So I think that's why at this time it's important that this is 
you know, we really try to make this voluntary and we try to hear from what the registries need from us and what the what the owners need from us so that it's kind of more of a they, – they come to us because they find the value in it. So a lot of the registries, we've heard very positive feedback, especially on the performance side of things and being able to have some true identification in here. But I've also heard from some members from the Appaloosa Registry um, and some – some smaller registries that would like to be uh, involved. Some, they all come for different reasons. Some are coming because they uh, need identification documents from a national organization to meet EU regulations. Some come for the performance aspect of things, and some come because of the, they know the value of identification and traceability. So we've definitely had feedback from some of them. I've also been in touch with um, – Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada's uh, Animal Pedigree Division and and the person who heads up all the registries underneath him. And they're very interested in watching how this progresses and would hope to see um, it somehow be included in, in their work at, down the road. Well, that's probably a good approach is to get it up and running with uh, – some of the smaller breeds and uh, the Canadian thing. And then once we know how it's going to work, then maybe we could offer something or, or at least the other major registries maybe would be more inclined to buy into or participate in our system. Yeah, and, and that aspect of the program is already up and running and has been for a while with the USES, and they're finding that they get more and more uptake every year. So when we move into implementation, their their um, person or staff member who's responsible for this portfolio over at USES has been very engaging and open with me. Uh, we work on a few things together, but when we work on this, he's given me a lot of information in terms of how they implemented it, uh, where their problems were be were in the beginning, how they've addressed them, and then and then what what they're really finding the registries find the value in so that we can include that when we come to implementation and be able to communicate the same way they are. All right. Okay, I think so, that will wind us, wind us up, Christy. Yeah, and I, I have some homework, so I will I'll, – what I'll basically do is go through the recording and just put that into, uh, into paper and send it out to everybody who's asked. Um, and if anybody has any further questions – um, the consultation is online with a full overview of the program and what implementation could look like. Um, and there is a direct link to a feedback portal there. So you just click on the link and put in your name and your or your um, contact information in your province. And then the uh, you can type all your feedback in there and then we get a downloaded report of it to keep it all together. Um, as well as you can always email me at any time with questions or comments.